hello friends tax so welcomes all of you for the today unique session on the ui corporate tax where experts from on our panel will be answer all your questions and the, this is a totally unique program which we develop for you and uh, experts on our panel are jointly have experience of more than 50 years plus and believe me this session is going to be very informative and knowledgeable on ui corporate tax now time is come to introduce to our esteemed panelist uh, our uh, main panelist is the dr atul gupta ji he was the past president of the ici highest accounting body in india and currently board member of the ifac and x blr international top global bodies for the accounting professional he has more than two decades of experience in the taxation and uh, difference differential uh, finance field and deliver more than thousands of lectures in uh, different uh, international and national forums and globally and he authored numerous books and published many articles in national and international journals and the leading newspapers let's welcome atul gupta ji in absentia he will join in a short while uh, basically he is traveling and uh, next next our panelist is the ch chirag gupta ji ch chirag gupta is the founder and the partner of the rng group dubai he chartered accountant post accountant and company secretary having more than 15 year of diverse experience in the uae zambia and india he specializes in corporate tax at statutory reporting internal controls and all financial functions of the finance he is also a frequent speaker at the technical forums on taxation and compliance matters including universities and uh, also some radio talk shows and uh, he regularly via articles in the different journals let's welcome ca chirag gupta ji welcome chirag ji chono ji yeah next uh, panelist be the ca nishant ramaya ji he is a qualified chartered accountant nishant in the field of the international taxation and bbs projects of the oecd he is almost two decades of experience in the uae and uh, in the big consulting firm big four big tens corporate tax practice as a practicing as a corporate and international tax partner with the rmc consult uae he is the founding member of the taxation society dubai and he has published two handbooks on the uae corporate tax welcome and thanks ca nishan ji for sparing time for the today's session friends thanks for the your overwhelming response we received more than 100 questions for this program and portion uh, if this questions pertain to the key topics so what is the ui corporate tax most of the technical questions pertain to the free jobs and remuneration managerial remuneration due to the proximity of time and benefits of the all the we allotted initially 20 minutes for the deliberation on the free zones and the manager remuneration which taken by the Nishant Ramaya and prior to that I will request to see Chirag Gupta ji because almost uh, 45 participants uh, I have the name of the, all these 45 participants those uh, know, know those want to know of, about the overview of the UI context so I will request to see Chirag Gupta ji to give a some time some overview on this so now over to see Chirag Gupta ji to give us the overview about the UI corporate tax for the brief introduction uh, so coming straight to the topic so uh, as we all know that you know corporate tax news officially was announced by the government on 31st of jan 2022 and the law was published on 9th of december 2022 so the government has given more than two years for the businesses to prepare in advance because it's the first time in this part of the world that the corporate tax has been introduced so what is the objective the objective over here should hear from the UA's position in the world is a tax transparent country and to commit to the international best practices. Now, as we all know that as the world stands, it's UA corporate tax. So all the individuals having all kinds of salary income, they need not to worry. There is no tax on your personal salary. It's only taxed on the corporate, on the company. So what is the meaning of corporate tax? So corporate tax is nothing but whatever the company is earning, which means the tax is on the profit. So whatever earning minus the expenses, which is sales, 
we deduct all the business expenses as allowed under the corporate tax law. The net remaining taxable profit on that you have to pay tax. Now, what is the tax rate? So, tax rate again, they have kept very low. This is one of the lowest tax rate in the world, which is single digit 9%. But over here, again, the government has given us taxation. It says that first $100,000, which is 375,000 profit up to you pay zero tax. And profit over and above 375,000 dirham, you pay only 9% tax. So let's say if the company had a turnover of say 1 million, out of that 1 million, there was let's say a 50% margin, you had a gross profit of 500,000. Out of the 500,000, considering all the taxable expenses allowed as per the corporate tax law is let's say 300,000. So remaining profit is 200,000. So on this 200,000, you don't have to pay any tax. You know, so because the profit is less than 375,000 dirham, but assuming the profit less is 500,000 dirham, so in this 500,000 dirham, you would deduct 375,000 dirham, and on the balance, you pay 9% tax. Now, also, there are certain exemptions in the law, like, you know, all the government companies or any company who are into natural uh, resources extraction, they are all exempt. Plus, you know, certain things like uh, dividend or capital gain subject to certain conditions are exempt. Plus, the government has given tax grouping. Please mind the tax grouping under corporate tax law is different from that. Uh, I can go on and on, but considering the time positivity, I will stop here, uh, Manoji. And uh, further, you know, maybe uh, since uh, further, uh, I can elaborate or discuss later if we have time. Over to you, Manoji. Now, after uh, CH Chura Gupta ji, over to CA Nishan ji to start a deliberation on free zone and the managerial remuneration because most of the question around these two technical questions. Over to CA Nishan ji. Thank you, Manam ji. As you rightly mentioned, yes, I was going through the questions and uh, for the benefit of uh, all the uh, participant, I will be reading quickly the questions so that everybody can understand that their questions are uh, covered by the uh, after question, whatever uh, I will be speaking about the cabinet decision 100 and uh, minister decision uh, 265. So the first question from uh, Muhammad Ali, clarification on free zone entity, then uh, one question is just uh, DMCC, DMCC very hot. Uh, subject uh, uh, since it is not a uh, designated zone so we can expect uh, uh, more questions and accordingly we have more questions on DMCC than free zone understanding more details on free zone I am reading this question so that uh, participant can understand that yes that questions are covered then uh, <clears throat> taxability of the export made by free zone entity and high sea sales by the free zone company under the UE city law. High sea sales is also a very hot topic. I'm sure a uh, lot many of the uh, participants want to understand what will be the treatment for the uh, high sea sales. Then the again, the high sea sales for the free zone entity, then uh, corporate tax for manufacturing. Manufacturing is also one of the qualifying activities. So accordingly, we'll be covering this as well. Then uh, latest amendment for the qualifying uh, qualified commodity trading for free zone. It is restricted to physical trading only or paper trading. Third part shipment is also allowed. This is a very uh, important question because uh, in this new amendment, they added qualifying commodity trading activity as a free as a qualifying activity. So we'll be speaking about that as well. Then holding of the equity share by the qualifying free zone person and getting dividend will be considered qualified income or not. Now this also, uh, here they have added a one word that shares and other security uh, hold for the investment purpose. Before it was not an investment purpose for the in the ministry decision 139. So we will be speaking on this as well. Then uh, very funny question, the how to save corporate tax. So uh, they know uh, saving of the corporate tax, but yes, efficient compliance of the corporate uh, tax law resulting a minimum tax liability that is called a legitimate tax planning and uh, 
uh, every citizen has an inherent right to do the tax planning. So it's not a saving uh, corporate tax, rather uh, it is paying the right amount of corporate tax by uh, efficient compliance of the corporate tax law provision. Then uh, there you have one question uh, asking regarding CA training, city training, corporate tax training. So yes, we do provide uh, corporate tax training for the corporate team as well as uh, uh, for uh, uh, single individual tax manager or the finance team. At present, uh, we are running the uh, corporate tax workshop by the RMC and tax show together. And uh, I'm a speaker at the Dubai chapter. There also we are running the uh, training. So accordingly, individually, you can uh, uh, separately, you can contact us whether you require a corporate tax uh, a training for your entire corporate tax team, finance team, or individual basis, uh, we can provide such training. Then uh, there is uh, more questions on the managerial remuneration. So this is also a very hot topic. One question as per our uh, uh, MOA, the managing directory is to be paid 7.5% uh, of net profit as a management fees every year. Will that be deductible expenses? The memorandum of association was drafted in 2015. So uh, one very, very uh, clear principle is that whatever you pay to the connected person, connected person is defined under Article 36 of the corporate tax law and uh, uh, managing director, uh, either as a shareholder, owner or partner or director, uh, so that way uh, he will be qualified as a managing uh, uh, connected person and anything you pay to such connected person need to be benchmarked. Those benchmark amount will be allowed as expenses. Excess uh, amount will not be allowed as expenses. So we will be speaking on this uh, uh, at length uh, subsequently. Then uh, more questions on this. Yes. Can a drop shipment, high sea sales by Zabza entity Qualify for qualifying income? Uh, yes, Japsa is a, a designated job. Now, high C, we will be speaking on the high C sales uh, subsequently. Free zone versus designated job. Very important question. A lot of people have this uh, concept that the free zone by default uh, become designated job. No. Or designate, designated job is a free zone or not. So, first, every free zone need to be uh, qualified free zone. That list is yet to uh, uh, released by the government. But if you read the uh, designated zone definition, which is uh, under cabinet decision 100, there before they used they, uh, the this, this uh, definition was in the ministerial decision 139. At that time, they said designated zone is the zone which is specified. And now, uh, they have changed the word specified to include that in the list. So to be a designated zone, the first and uh, foremost requirement is it needs to be a free zone. So at present, uh, authorities are saying that you can ask your uh, authority. But since uh, uh, on 3rd November, they have changed the word, word from specified to include that. So we can expect a list of the free zone as uh, uh, many of you know, we have almost around 42 plus free zone. And many of the free zones will be not sitting in the definition of the free zone. Maidan free zone uh, allow offices in the uh, mainland as well on the selection basis. So this all yet to be clear. Uh, we are expecting either the some more collection or uh, some guide the way uh, on every subject we are getting the guide we can expect uh, some uh, guide from the uh, FTA to clarify uh, the concept of the free zone and uh, designate designated zone is uh, clarified that as per uh, law number eight of 2017 which was issued under the web those which is listed over there somewhere around uh, 24 uh, Free zone, those free zones will be regarded as a uh, designated zone. So we will be covering this, but since uh, this was very important free zone and designated uh, zone concept, so I thought that at this stage I can uh, clarify since it is not uh, related to qualifying activities. Then uh, transfer pricing and related party. 
So this also we will be uh, briefly touching about uh, trans, uh, transfer pricing at a time. Uh, this question will also be answered. Free zone company is under corporate tax or not? One thing uh, at this uh, stage only I want to clarify that every free zone company is very well under the net of the corporate tax. In the sense, every free zone company need to register with the Federal Tax Authority and file the return. The only incentive given is whether 9% corporate tax, which we call the regular city regime, will be applicable or 0% corporate tax regime will be applicable. So, whatever incentive is for the payment of tax liability, whereas registration and filing of the return uh, for every free zone business is must. Then, the, what is the qualifying and non qualifying? Free job person, we will be uh, discussing the provision of Article 18 of the corporate tax law. At a time, we will be touching upon the same. I would like to know about the transfer pricing. We will be speaking about the transfer pricing. Uh, then, uh, yeah, this is a very important question, uh, though we do not have uh, uh, much time to take it. Uh, kill Jain has put. I wish to set up the family office in DIFC or free job or mainland with the sole objective of investing in all kind of asset, cl uh, asset classes globally or regionally and local wealth. Will there be tax applic uh, applicable or not? Uh, now we are re many companies in our financial region, the AFC and ADGM and they provide actually this question uh, come under the family foundation. Yes, uh, if you do the proper uh, uh, planning for the family foundation, you can get a benefit of uh, uh, 0% uh, tax since uh, certain uh, income uh, is uh, tax free like the dividend, the interest, those income, some uh, rental to the individual is also uh, not taxable. So we can uh, discuss on one to one basis. But yes, we are uh, forming a lot of uh, foundation, family foundation, uh, especially in the financial free zone. And many of the benefit available to such uh, uh, financial uh, free zone if the family foundation is uh, formed correctly. Then the owner who work as a CEO can eligible to get the beneficiary as an employer like salary. We will be discussing about this uh, 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 while, we'll take a, while we take the manager remuneration. Then uh, tax treatment of DMCC company for out of scope sale. I think that out of scope sale concept is under uh, VAT VAT. But DMCC and uh, whether DMCC certain activity will be eligible for the zero percent or not. That we will be discussing here. Then uh, what are the qualifying income uh, in the corporate tax? Uh, whether trading in the equity is taxable even if the equity uh, is carried under the DMCC free zone. Again, uh, we will be touching those 14 qualifying activity at a time uh, uh, we will be addressing the same. Then uh, who is exempt under UE corporate tax or uh, free zone entity exempt? Uh, as I said, free zone exempt, uh, entity is not exempt. Please, at this uh, uh, stage, I want to clarify that if you are a qualified free zone, you will avoid zero percent corporate tax. When we say zero percent, it means the free zone, whether qualified or not qualified free zone, uh, is not uh, exempt from the tax. You, your rate is zero percent, whereas other businesses will require to pay the tax at nine percent. Uh, qualified free zone, we will be discussing the provision of Article 18. Free zone, recent clarification, we will be discussing uh, Cabinet Decision 100 and uh, Municipal Decision 265. Is investment in real estate subject to corporate tax? We also want to know more about the uh, uh, taxability of the free zone. Investment in real estate, uh, if it is through the individual, then the income on such uh, investment uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, not subject to tax. Why I am saying maybe there are certain conditions which need to be fulfilled. If you have a particular scenario, please you can always contact us. We can guide you. Uh, walkthrough of the corporate tax for family office. As I said uh, uh, here uh, before, that yes, family foundations are uh, 
eligible for certain uh, uh, incentive provided by the corporate tax law itself and accordingly if that uh, family foundation are formed in a particular free zone which is the financial free zone then certain benefits are available uh, entire uh, provision of the family foundation will not be taking last we took it and it almost took a 30 to 40 minutes but since there are two questions both of you guys can uh, 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 directly one to one you guys can uh, uh, send the email or uh, call us and we will be clarifying more on that for the larger uh, uh, interest of the audience will be uh, speaking more uh, we will be speaking more on the free job and manager remuneration uh, since 70 to 80 percent questions are on these two subjects what what is the tax impact on trading distribution company operating with without movement of good a local person on 100 property having no license and his total uh, generated net income yearly is so much okay now uh, this is also a very important question we uh, uh, organize we restructure many of the company here all the landlord they have say here uh, in this question uh, mohammed goss is saying 100 property yes uh, the landlord they have a uh, multiple property say 50 100 200 so what they do they form a one maintenance company and rental income is booked under this maintenance company so now one need to understand this i will be just touching upon on this if this rental income is directly going to the landlord all the uh, natural person's uh, income is uh, tax free but if these properties are under uh, any business or any company in that case any income on these properties will be taxable of course the title deed is very important if title deed is under a landlord or owner name again uh, if you have given this business to your uh, maintenance company then uh, there may be a uh, problem of the uh, paying the tax so this also we have restructured recently many companies but uh, overall a broad concept is that any income of the individual person the natural person like you and me will not be subject to tax whereas same property is under uh, uh, any company any business then any income on such a uh, uh, property or a business uh, uh, will be like even if you sell the such property and if it is under a uh, company name then it may be tax uh, uh, nine percent corporate tax then holding of the equity share by qualifying free john and getting dividend will be considered qualified income. Now, recently, under uh, uh, Ministry Decision 265, they have added the word for investment. So, before it was holding of the equity share and security. Now, they put the condition of the investment and one more condition they have attached that, that such a share should be the minimum period of uh, holding of such share should be 12 months. So when we say investment, it means it should be a serious investment. It shouldn't be a casual investment, which we 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 do uh, say uh, one month, two months, three months, or less than twelve months. If you sell, then uh, the any income on such sale will not be eligible for the tax. So this was the all question I was reading, so that the audience can understand that uh, their uh, uh, questions are very well considered uh, wherever possible. Uh, we touch upon if the details uh, answers require you can always on one to one you can uh, contact us so now uh, in 10 minutes i will uh, give you the overview of the free zone how does the things work with the free zone there is a article 18 of the corporate tax law which provides six conditions to be a qualifying free zone from the free zone so the if you have a free zone person you have a business in the free zone if you satisfy these six condition then you become a qualified person once you become a qualified free zone person then you will be eligible for the nine percent uh, for the zero percent of corporate tax if any of these conditions are not satisfied then you have to uh, follow the regular corporate tax regime and you have to pay the nine percent what is those six conditions? First condition is such free zone person need to have a substance within the free zone. 
So when we say substance, now again in the uh, new pronouncements, they have uh, described more that uh, your uh, revenue generating activities and your uh, maintenance of substance need to be in the same region. So suppose you have a distribution company in the uh, Jafsa and you have a branch in DMCC. All the activities getting conducted from the DMCC, where you are booking the income in the Jafsa, that will not qualify as a substance. So they have clarified this uh, uh, before uh, it was the uh, stand of the many of the consultant that yes, you can now uh, you can have a substance in any of the region respective of the uh, revenue generating activity. But this is very well covered now. Second. Before they said that you have to have adequate employees, adequate qualified employees. Now, first time they added the word full time. Employee. It means the person uh, need to be a full time employee uh, to uh, make it a adequate substance. So this is also one requirement that uh, how how to understand whether we have adequate substance or not. It means when we are running the business from the free zone, we should have an office. We should have adequate furniture. We should have adequate qualified employees. It shouldn't happen that five office boy we put in the office and we say that we have a five employees, so we have adequate uh, substance. No, it will not work. So it should be adequate qualified full time employee. Again, one person. Otherwise, the, you know the window will open that one person is a uh, employee in a five company. Since now they are allowed to work for more than one company, but the part-time working is allowed uh, in UAE, but that will again, in this uh, new pronouncement, they have clarified you have to be a full-time. So first, first requirement is substance. Second requirement is transfer pricing regulation. So uh, entire article 34 of the corporate tax law, which speak about the uh, arm's length price for the control transaction. Whenever you do the transaction with the related party, and connected person. Related party is defined under Article 35. Connected person is defined under Article 36. So if you do any transaction with these two, then those transactions need to be at arm's length. That's called the transfer pricing. Transfer pricing nothing but the pricing uh, for the control transaction. This is nothing but the shifting of the property. Suppose uh, uh, there are two related party, and if you don't do the proper uh, Pricing that you can end up setting the profit. So that also we touch up on the transfer pricing. So secondly, the transfer pricing. Third and most important condition is that such free zone business uh, undertake the qualifying activity and generate a qualifying income. So the question was, what is the qualifying activities? Qualifying activities is defined under a Ministerial Decision 265, which replaced the Ministerial Decision 139. In Ministerial Decision 139, there were one, uh, 13 uh, activity which was regarded as a qualifying activity. Now they added one more IP. So any qualified IP uh, and if you generate the income from such a uh, uh, IP, then that will also be regarded as qualifying activity. Please note that this IP income before was an excluded in, uh, activity, which now become a qualifying activity. So again, we go back to the article 18. We will be a little bit going fast uh, in the interest of time. So article uh, 18, six condition, substance, transfer pricing, qualifying income. Then uh, once you uh, satisfy these three, then such audit, uh, such free zone person need to conduct the audit. So audit is mandatory. Then uh, suppose you earn the income which is not a qualified income, then uh, uh, the limit, the window they keep 5% or 5 million, whichever is lower. So in the sort, they are saying no problem if you are uh, earning the income, qualified income from the qualifying activity to the extent of 95%, then uh, that 5% will not create a problem. Please note that. If this become a 6% or more than 5 million, then your uh, business will be subject to 9% for coming 4 years. So total the block of 5 years. Again, this is very important that uh, if you are located in free zone and uh, from 1st January 2024, 
for one day if you do not comply with any of the condition this may cause you to pay the 9% tax for the coming for so total 5 years so it is very important immediately the, the way we are discussing with all our clients that immediately immediately they have to implement this uh, uh, new pronouncement so that they start complying with the condition from the 1st January 2024 which is almost uh, two months so that's very important so de minimus 5% this is also one requirement. Now we will be uh, in the interest of time. We will be touching upon the what happened on the third of November, twenty twenty three. So they repeal the cabinet decision fifty five, and they come up with the cabinet decision hundred, which is almost on the same line. Only IP uh, uh, they regarded they removed from the excluded activity and they put under the uh, qualifying activity, and then one. Uh, important, very important uh, changes was done that designated zone definition was under ministerial decision, which they shifted under the cabinet decision. Now, it is very important to understand here four authority. One is the law, then comes the cabinet decision. Cabinet decision is uh, uh, duly signed by Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin uh, uh, Rashid himself. Then uh, uh, minister decision, minister decision is uh, issued and signed by the minister, and then uh, FT decisions. Mostly FT decision for the administrative purposes, uh, and then the ministerial decision. All the routine matter, wherever there is a significant uh, matter, it will be uh, under the cabinet decision duly signed by the state government. So now this is very important that why the shifted uh, uh, designated zone definition from the ministerial decision. To the cabinet decision and they change the one word only one word they change they say that uh, those will be regarded as free zone which is before which uh, they said which is specified under the corporate tax law now they say which is uh, included in accordance with the corporate tax law so specified and included that way we can uh, uh, we will be sent to presume that more uh, uh, either list or some some of the form, they will specify who will be regarded as a free job. So this is the two uh, new pronouncement. I don't know whether I am running short of time or how. Manojji, uh, uh, you can just uh, or I can finish the uh, manager remuneration in five minutes. Yeah, sure. All right. So now this was the free zone. Any more question on free zone on one to one? We can answer. Now we will be discussing about the manager remuneration again. This is very hot topic. Article thirty six. Look here. Uh, we have a corporate tax. Corporate tax they announced on thirty first January twenty twenty two. We were following the OECD for uh, since uh, four to five years. When they announced the corporate tax on thirty first uh, January twenty twenty two. And immediately the question came uh, to our mind on, on 1st February. It means on the next day of the announcement, I put this question even on the public platform that what will be the manager remuneration? What happened here? 70% is the SMEs. It means those are closely held companies run by the owner or relative of the owner. So the, here we, we don't have, we have very less uh, bigger company, but mostly it's a small or medium company run by the owner. So what will happen? Suppose your business has a 1 million profit. What you will do? You take entire profit as a salary since there is no personal income tax. Like uh, before corporate tax, we were uh, thinking that how they will implement it because there is no personal income tax, whereas they want to do the corporate tax. Corporate tax and personal income tax go hand together. But here they come up with a new concept called the connected person. It means any relative, any owner, then the director, then officer and related party of these three, if it is employed within a company and you provide any benefit to such a person, whether owner, shareholder, partner or uh, officer and director, or any of the related party, you provide any benefit, salary or perks or any benefit that need to be benchmarked. When we say benchmark, it means we need to work out the fair market value. So now, hot question is, my owner is running the company. How much salary I can pay? Like one question was, I am paying 7.5% uh, as an incentive. 
whether that will be tenth amount of his salary. Question is very simple. One, one need to understand. So there are, is there any guideline uh, that how much or or what should be the right amount? Yes, under the UAE commercial law, uh, there is a guideline that if you are a profit making company, ten percent of the net profit can be. They are not saying that you should put a ten percent, but can be. So there is some jobs. Suppose your company is in a loss, then up to two hundred thousand, you can pay the uh, salary to the managing director. Uh, there is a certain guidelines under OECD as well, which provide that on a need base, you need to understand whether you require manager, uh, manager, manager, you require a CEO or not. It shouldn't happen that you already have a CEO and CFO, and top of that, your owner is also getting salary uh, by utilizing that position. So it will be on a need base. There is no certain amount prescribed by the government, and it is not possible to prescribe. Uh, certain amount very important first time maybe you might be hearing but remember if if your uh, manager revenue increase or is more than uh, 1 million and if it is a rent amount as a business then maybe personally you will end up uh, uh, becoming subject to the corporate tax more clarification on this concept this is a very new concept more clarification is yet expected if it is not in the form of salary or personal income, if it is in form of like as you say incentive commission, it means uh, you are doing business. So individual, whether you have a license or not, but if you do business or business activity, will be subject to corporate tax. So that uh, provision also, while drafting your uh, uh, appointment letter or commission agreement or incentive agreement, you have to be very careful by uh, uh, keeping these things also in your mind. So, manager remuneration, what will be the limit? There is no limit. It should be fair. Whatever manager remuneration you will fix, it need to be benchmark. It need to be understand what will be the fair market value. There are certain guidelines uh, under the commercial law, uh, but every person will require to do the due diligence before fixing the managing revolution and it is very important that from the day one it means from 1st January 2024 you pay the right uh, manager re uh, remuneration. It shouldn't happen that uh, you pay something else in January and then subsequently you change it then gas can kick in. So it is very important to uh, look this provision within these two months. Uh, I think I cover the free zone, manager remuneration in the interest of time, a very bigger subject, but we cannot cover everything. Uh, you guys will be having our uh, contact details uh, for one to one. You can always uh, uh, reach out to us. Thank you so much. Over to, uh, over to you, Manojji. Yeah, thanks uh, C and Ishanji and uh, for the wonderful and uh, deliberation and uh, take all of us into the deep into the UA corporate text. I think uh, you are a last uh, half an hour interaction and deep dive into the subject will help helpful uh, to the all the participant here. I think uh, there are the lots of top topics uh, you already covered and the maximum questions you try to cover. So I request to see a Chirag Gupta ji. There is the, some eight nine questions be raised by the some people in the Q and A chat box. I will request to him he answer these questions and if any critical topic is missed during the discussion because I am not the two, I'm the subject matter expert. <laughs> but so I request Chirag ji to also deliberate on this and uh, give the insight. So over to Chirag bhai. Uh, thank you, Manoji. Uh, so coming straight to the questions, I was seeing the group chat. Also, the questions raised by, on the earlier form that we received. Uh, majority were also uh, apart from three zones and management regulation. It was also on the group registration. So uh, first of all, the group registration requirements are totally different from what are the group requirements under the UE VAT law. Number one. Number two, it might be that under the VAT law, the company is having a group or individual registration, but in corporate tax law, it can be different. Like say in VAT, you are having group registration, but under corporate tax, since the requirements are different to form a tax group, you might be having two separate registration. So first of all, let's discuss what are the requirements to form a tax group under the CV corporate tax. So first and foremost, you have to consider that there's a holding and subsidy structure and that holding company 
is holding minimum 95% of shares or voting rights directly or indirectly. This is number one. Number two, all the companies under the group registration should have the same financial year and should follow the same accounting standards. And neither of these companies should be a qualifying free zone person or an exempt person. So once these major four conditions are satisfied, then we can form a tax group. And as we all know that when you form a tax group, then it is the responsibility of the parent company to file the return and to pay taxes. But we cannot overrule the responsibility of the other members in the group. Jointly and severally, all are responsible. Regarding the registration of the tax group, are presently all the companies have to register individually and then there would be further guideline how you can club it. So presently, if you want to register, register it separately under the corporate tax through the tax portal and the government will soon announce when you can club it. Also, I was seeing uh, there were further calls on real estate as well. So I would also talk, uh, like to talk about the real estate. So as we all know that uh, UA, uh, for UA, real estate are very, is a very important segment and major contributor to the economy. So obviously, uh, UAE will not, uh, there would be certain relaxations under real estate. But first and foremost, let me clear it out that if any individual is having, let's say, any real estate income from, for investment purposes, which doesn't require a license, then it would not be covered under the corporate tax law. It may be 10 properties, it may be 100 properties or 1000 properties, as long as he or she is the individual owner of the property and this activity doesn't require to obtain a license from the authority. But if the real estate property is owned by any company or if it is a real estate company or real estate broker, then it would be taxable. Also, if the real estate, uh, let's say property is owned by any foreign company, then again, it would be taxable. So you have to be very, very careful about how you do the transaction, see the land transaction, because many times, you know, as an auditor, we have come across many audit report in which the real estate property is owned by the individual, but the property is sitting in the books of the company just to increase the network of the company. So we have to be very cautious. We have to see, check your, with your auditor, check with your financial statements, what in the past you have been doing and rectify it because as you might see that you know uh, the big day which is first of jan 2024 is just around the corner we have just one and a half month left and now is not the time we have to act very fast very diligently because once the tax goes live you will not have time and this is saying we not have time so now is the right time that we act or if you don't know please go through the law the government is very supportive. Just uh, like I said, a couple of weeks back, you know, uh, the FTA had a very impressive seminar in which they have invited public all over UAE. We have we have also visited me and Ishanji over there, and they have mentioned that uh, we understand it's new for everyone, but ignorance cannot be an excuse that this new so I was not aware. No, you cannot say that. Everything is available. The government is doing all the best webinars, seminars. So please attend them. Please get abreast, especially your accountants, especially the business owners as well of the new regime. Moreover, further questions. Uh, secondly, that I would like to talk about is penalty. There was further questions that what are the penalties? Uh, what is the registration requirement? So, like any new law uh, comes in force, there are of course penalty for non-compliance. So, for the penalty, there was a cabinet decision number seventy-five of twenty twenty-three which has already been in effect from 1st of August 2023. So there are further uh, many penalties mentioned, but I cannot uh, go through each and every penalty. But yes, uh, we all know that uh, penalty is always there, but let's not focus on penalty. Let's focus on the compliance. So registration has already been started. You can go through MRI tax portal, the same portal which you are doing for the VAT if you're a registered company. So this is I like about UA. I mean, you don't have to create a separate uh, login for the corporate tax shape login you can use and registration process is very simple it will not take more than i don't think it's not not take more than 10 minutes provided you have all the requirements in advance in place like if you're going for registration for a company or for an individual and the uh, once you submit the application fta will review and if the further requirements are there they will come back to you or if everything is okay they will approve the registration uh, there was one more question for the return filing 
So as of the moment, uh, the return format is not released by the authorities. We are still waiting for it. But uh, the return filing due date is nine months from the end of financial year. Uh, majority the companies over here in US following Jan to December as the uh, financial year. So assuming Jan to December, so your due date would be 30th of September 2025. So we have sufficient time. Again, very commendable of the UAE government that they are giving very good time for the taxpayers to you know to calculate to see what is allowed, what is not allowed under the corporate tax law. Uh, and second, the question was just uh, what is how to calculate the profit. So, which is again a big exercise because not always your accounting profit would be the same as a taxable profit. Because accounting profit you are doing as per your IFRS accounting standards, but we have to see as per the UA corporate tax law, certain expenses like entertainment expenses are only around 50%, so which you have to add back. Then there are certain expenses which are not allowed at all, like bribes or illicit payments or like ITA fines you have to add back. So now the role of accountant is very critical because how they make the chart of accounts. Right now, you know, uh, when we go for uh, many times we have visited, you know, me and Nishanji to many clients for corporate tax implementation awareness session, we see that, you know, accountant, again, we do respect, they are uh, booking the entertainment expenses, you know, sometimes in office expenses, sometimes in sanitary expenses, sometimes it's in a miscellaneous. And after the year end, when the, uh, when we, we will go to return file, they will not know. They have to go to each and every transaction line by line to understand where they have posted entertainment expenses. So it is the right time we align your chart of accounts. You know, what is, you should have a separate heading as of entertainment expenses and not just post randomly anywhere, you know. So I'm just giving a brief flavor, you know, what changes we should implement as a good corporate governance practice uh, so that uh, the corporate tax, uh, when it is there, is like we don't have any issues. Uh, Manoji, I hope I was able to answer most of the questions. Uh, Nishanji, if you like to take up some of them. Yeah, one one question uh, uh, which uh, though is not very clear, but uh, very clear, but we can uh, uh, touch upon. Uh, many of the uh, uh, participant ask about uh, high CC. So what uh, happened now, the, they added uh, one more qualifying activity called the qualifying commodities trading. So those commodities, if it is uh, listed on any recognized stock exchange, in that case, those will be regarded as a uh, qualifying activity and uh, that may not be from the designated zone. So distribution activity is still required to be conducted from the designated zone. So whenever you are importing the good, it should be imported through the designated and exported through the designated zone. Whereas the qualifying commodities, you can uh, uh, do from any uh, free zone so long as those those commodities like a metal minerals or agriculture product those commodity if it is listed and the rest are available on any recognized stock exchange one more thing we need to understand that those commodities need to be traded in the raw form so it shouldn't be a packed all process as long as those your high ce is uh, conducting such activities, then uh, uh, you may get a benefit under this uh, uh, qualifying activity. In that case, you will not require to be in a designated job. I hope that will uh, clarify your high C cells. As such, there is no specific uh, uh, answer to the high C cells. Uh, and distribution activities still uh, need to be from the designated job. Uh, any other questions on the free zone? I'm just scrolling down. Are only qualifying free zone now eligible for headquarter activity to be zero rated or weak? Or it can be any other free zone, even not qualified. Look, to get a zero person, you need to be qualified free zone person. So if you are if you you are not satisfying any of the article eighteen's uh, condition, then you are just a free job person uh, liable for the nine percent. So it is uh, important for you to be a qualified free job person to get a zero percent 
कॉपरेट टैक्स रिजिम Any other uh, questions on the free zone? Vishanji, one uh, interesting question has been raised. Uh, what about the mainland? Uh, the name I think is Kailash. Kailash is asking, what about the mainland entity having branch under qualifying free zone? Can they would be a tax group or separate registration required? The Article Eleven File specific. Specifically, uh, provide that uh, branch is nothing but the uh, extension of their court. So in that case, whatever the resident status of the headquarter will be of the branch. So in this case, the branch is nothing but the uh, uh, LLC at the mainland, and the books of account need to be consolidated in the headquarter. So so see, branch is not a legal separate entity. So, if you want to make the group as per Article 40, uh, which uh, provides for the certain conditions, seven conditions to form the group, it is start that holding company and subsidiary need to be a resident juridical person. So, whereas a branch is not a separate juridical person, hence branch and headquarter cannot form the group, rather branch, books of account and uh, uh, financial statement will be club. Uh, with the headquarter and then you have to file the single tax. Right. Also, Manoj has asked, free zone person can apply for small business relief. So they have mentioned the word free zone or qualifying free zone. So Nishanji, of course, the answer would be different, right? For a free zone and qualifying free zone. Correct. So once you satisfy the six condition of Article 18, then you are eligible for the 0% tax. And even your uh, uh, 5% uh, income will be eligible for the zero. But suppose you are not, uh, you are not qualifying the six condition, any of the six condition, it means you are a free zone person, but you are not a qualified free zone person. So such free zone person is under the net of the regular corporate tax regime, which is a 9%. All the people, all the businesses under the regular tax regime can avail the SBR small business relief as long as their income is 3 million or less. So that way, yes, uh, such free zone business will be eligible to get a uh, uh, benefit of SBR so long as such free zone person is not a qualified free zone. Also, uh, Mr. Nesh question by Mr. Sajay. How to register a qualifying free zone? Is there any deadline to register? I assume he is talking about how to register for a qualifying free zone company. And you know, as we already discussed, that registration is mandatory for all the companies, whether you are a free zone, whether you're a qualifying free zone or a mainland company. Regarding the deadline, again, this is very commendable of the UA government that there is no such deadline for registration as long as you register before the tax return due date. So assuming if your financial year, let's say January to December, so your tax uh, deadline would be 30th of September, which is the return filing due date. But ideally, you know, you should not wait till the last moment as when to submit the application, the FP also needs some time to review for that. I hope this answers your question, Mr. Sajid. A next question for you, Nishanji, by... Yeah, uh, uh, I would like to add what you said. I think the... Uh, participant want to understand is there any mechanism to understand whether uh, it is a uh, qualified free zone person and for that you require a separate registration? The answer is no. You have to do the registration under corporate tax. Now, whether you are a qualified free zone person or not, for that is simple. You have to do the self assessment to see whether you are coming under the bracket of qualified free zone person. If yes, then you can file the return as per zero percent. If not, then you have to pay the nine percent tax liability. This is the logical process, though the uh, Federal Tax Authority has not come out with this uh, process, but they have not uh, made it mandatory to do the registration uh, as a qualified region person. Only one registration required, which will be the registration under corporate tax law. However, right. you, Chirangi. 
Yeah, so next question is by Shikha. Mainland company having branch in qualifying free zone. Can it be eligible for zero percent? I think the same thing which you have covered earlier, Nishanji. Maybe I think the participants of this question and they understand it's a very tricky topic. So if you can briefly summarize again in the interest of uh, participants. See, the, uh, uh, as I said, the, there is a specific provision within the four corner of the uh, law. So uh, Article 11.5 specifically speak about that, that branch is the extension of the headquarter. So whether branch is located in the mainland or, or free zone or foreign. Right. Every, under the International Financial Reporting Standard as well, branch books you have to club with the headquarter. And accordingly, uh, under the corporate tax also, branch uh, uh, financial statement need to be uh, incorporated with the headquarter and whatever the tax position of the headquarter will be the tax position of the branch. Right. I hope this uh, clears the question. Uh, the next question I would like to take again uh, the management member Nishanji. I think you have already covered, but since they have raised the further question on your deliberation, uh, the name is not mentioned. It says, can owner who is involved in the administration be eligible for the salary and other financial benefits? Okay. So now manager remuneration, first you have to demonstrate such owner is conducting some function. So you need to have a JD, job description, for or whether you are doing admin work or you are doing any other work. See, uh, there are certain uh, owners, they just come to sign the checks. Those owners may not be eligible for, uh, say, higher salary. Maybe they can be eligible for uh, some management fees or uh, if they are sitting in the board of director, then uh, uh, director fees. But those, those uh, owner may not be eligible where the functions of the CEO is performed by professional CEO. So you will require to understand the what timing, what job description, and accordingly such owners will be eligible for the salary or manager remuneration. For that, again, you, you will not require to do the uh, labor contract the way we do for the employment contract. You can always have the agreement with uh, the such owner or shareholder and you can fix the fair market value as a remuneration. To answer your question, if such owner is uh, discharging the duties of the administrator, then uh, such owner will be eligible for the salary and uh, what salary you have to benchmark with the uh, same uh, level of company, same size and same nature of duty. Similar salary uh, owner can be uh, withdraw from the business. Right. Manoji, can we take a couple of questions or we are already on the time? Yeah, you can, you can take. I think uh, no issue. If, uh, okay, thank you. I, I think objective of the, the today's session is to answer the questions. So I think uh, you mm -hmm. can take. Chiragi, I want to add in manager remuneration. Uh, like yesterday, we were having a big event in Texas and society and uh, four or five people run and they asked me that, okay, so no, we want to pay. We are paying since four years. We want to pay 50,000. So what better tax authority will come and say, no, don't pay 50,000, pay 10,000. To clear this uh, platform also, you can continue paying the salary, whatever salary you deem fit to your shareholder or owner, but when we say what salary allowed, this is allowed as a expenses for the corporate tax fund. So suppose you are an owner, you are drawing say 50,000 or you want to draw 50,000, you can continue debiting the same to your profit and loss account. But when you prepare your statement of taxable income, at a time only fair market value of the salary will be eligible for the expenses balance you have to add back to your net profit where you already debited your manager remuneration and accordingly you have to calculate your corporate tax liability so fd or federal tax authority will not uh, uh, stop you to pay the salary they will not fix your uh, owner salary you can continue paying as long as you are ready to pay the tax which is nine percent on such additional remuneration you can continue paying the uh, salary at the amount, whatever you do fit. Chirag, over to you. Right, thank you. So, uh, 
it i think this answers lot of other questions so i can see majority participants have asked about the director remuneration about the owner salary bonuses so i think uh, this uh, one word summarizes all majority of the questions but before uh, we sum up let me take a couple of questions next question is by abdullah uh, yes nishan ji he is asking what about business structure relief so all business uh, structure so i think yeah is mention business structure relief but i think he is he meant to say small business relief so i think majority of the companies in ua is 80% are smes so please if you can enlighten us nishan ji on that okay so again little bit i want to add uh, in the manager remuneration because a lot of questions i can see see here we have a culture that mostly we employ our relatives right so you have to be very careful the uh, definition of related party under article 35 is altogether different than iisa 25 24 related party disclosure in international financial reporting standard we are doing the uh, disclosure for related party since uh, long time but then the related party is altogether different article 35 is very wide. Your fourth level of kinship will be regarded as your related party. For example, you have a company and your great grandfather's branch, anybody employed in your business, you have to do the benchmark the salary. Suppose they are having the business or a, a company and your company doing the transaction with such company, those transactions need to be benchmarked. So, you know, it is a very far-reaching. As per the custom, mostly we uh, employ our relatives, distance relative. I think all, whether the owner, owner wife, uh, owner relatives, uh, wife, all those will come under the fourth degree of the kinship. And accordingly, if those are employed, their salary also need to be benchmarked. uh then the second person also small and uh, small business Absolutely. relief yeah small business relief is available to all businesses except the uh, qualified free zone person since qualified free zone person uh, is eligible for the zero percent so condition is simple that uh, as so long as your uh, revenue is 3 million or below then and this is for on the election basis so you have to elect there are certain businesses they are incurring the loss though their uh, income is below 3 million and they are incurring the loss so to carry for such loss they may not go for the small business relief accordingly government has given a option that if you want to go for small business relief what will be the benefit benefit suppose uh, your uh, revenue is 2 million your profit is 1 million suppose you not go for the small business relief then you have to pay the tax on and above a uh, taxable income of 375000 suppose your taxable income is 1 million then balance a uh, 3625000 you have to pay 9% but if you opt for the small business relief then you will not require to pay uh, any tax in respect to of your profit number 1 second your corporate tax uh, return will be in a simplified format but you have to follow the arms length principle article 34 of the corporate tax law it means all your contra transaction you have to follow the transfer pricing regulation so this is in the brief for the small business relief i want to add one thing more if the natural persons business or business income is up to 1 million then such person will not require to do any registration or file return and pay the tax liability it means uh, government has given a benefit for the natural person even if they are doing the business or business activity so long as their income is uh, within a uh, 1 million there will not be a tax liability there will not be a registration comment or filing the return so in not say as long as you are earning a 375000 which is almost somewhere around 30000 dirham uh, taxable income not tax if you are doing business on a individual capacity and so long as your income revenue revenue is 1 million there will not be any tax or registration requirement I hope that answered the question. Right. Thank you, Nishant ji, for your. I think 
yeah yeah thank you nishan ji and uh, i think uh, thank you chirag ji i think uh, wonderful uh, we covered al- almost uh, all the questions and i think uh, we are able to resolve the queries of the uh, participants and uh, and uh, i want to say that uh, this uh, session is very successful because uh, we get the lots of queries and questions from the participant and uh, my request to the participant if missed any question please raise to us and our team will report you shortly now i also want to cover the one topic uh, there is the lots of people ask about the like mohan ji manoj ji anushatra ji hamid salman ji about the uh, training so the on the corporate tax and the awareness and the knowledge enhancement so i just want to share that uh, like uh, mentioned by the nishan ji we already running the short term courses uh, the six day courses on the ua corporate tax and uh, third batch is going to be start very soon on the 17th of november and uh, this is the weekend courses friday saturday and sunday and uh, ca chirag gupta and uh, ca nishan is also be the speaker uh, or you can the faculty of this program along with the uh, ca atul kumar gupta ji who is in absentia is not able to join due to some uh, unavoidable reasons and the fees of this course is also very nominal is the in inr is the 11800 and in aid is the 525 is a very nominal fees you can join this course i think uh, like uh, we are showing the interest in the ua corporate tax and uh, i can bet on that ki this course is going to be the value add into the your knowledge in the ua corporate tax and second part is that uh, if you want to be not able to join these courses we also have the self paced learning uh, digital solution or the repository in the ua corporate tax uh, in the tax so where you always get the 24 by 7 all the articles all the regulations all the decisions at a one place and the supported by the flow charts commentaries and illustration and the till case laws case laws from the global jurisdiction and the monthly webinar so all of we be updated uh, remain updated on the ua corporate tax in fact you can ask any question there and uh, our experts uh, give you the answers and uh, this is from the my side and uh, if anybody is interested so our team will be contact you with the numbers of myself or chirag ji or juhi ji who is the coordinating the this program and uh, definitely we will meet soon and uh, i will again request to join the this course on the weekend so which is very helpful going to be very reaching and now again all the thanks to the participant and uh, especially thanks to the our panelist c chirag gupta ji c nishan ji and uh, wish you all very happy and uh, prosperous diwali because uh, we are from the india and uh, this festival of uh, lights is going to be i wish to bring more prosperity in the to the all the things this is from my side i think thank you very much and uh, chirag ji or nishan ji if you want to add anything please kindly add yeah yeah actually i was raising the hand to add uh, for the uh, this course uh i think uh, we did not mention but we come to we successfully completed two batches of this course uh, uh with a uh, with a uh, very high registration the last batch uh, even the reviews are available we already trained more than 100 people uh through this course this course is very uh, you know within a uh, six days you will have a, a commandable knowledge of the corporate tax which whether you are going to implement a corporate tax with your tax consultant in your business or if you are planning to uh, start a career in the corporate tax then also within a 6 day and good thing is that this uh, our course is on a weekend online again it is a online course so the people sitting in ue people sitting in india can take the benefit the even the reviews are available on the public platform a very positive reviews of last two batches we cover and we have a limited uh, uh, capacity of uh, uh, registrant so accordingly uh, still uh, some uh, seats are available and i will uh, uh, urge all the member for your all other questions you can always register in this uh, Uh, what we do we give a last uh, 10 minutes for the any of the questions you have you can always ask to the uh, speaker of that uh, particular uh, topic yeah over to you chirag ji uh, i think uh, i was what i was about to say i've already covered uh, nishan ji uh, so 
but I just i would like to add on you know in the previous sessions still we are in touch with the students with the participants it's not like the course is over so our job is done no this relationship is not ended after the course completes still is ongoing because the corporate tax is evolving if you see just uh, you know day before uh, this last two week there was a new a decision on the accounting standards so one of the participants has called me and was having a question so which, which we replied so the beauty what we offer is not a one time we offer a long time because corporate tax is now forever you know once it goes live so it's in the interest of all and we are here just to spread the knowledge just to spread the awareness on the corporate tax law that's it that's it from my side over to you manoj ji or juhi ji i think uh, thank you very much uh, nishant uh, rai ma ji for the value addition and chiragi and uh, talk about the course and uh, now i also thanks to the participant uh, definitely we will meet very soon and uh, thank you very much thank you thank you